Praise the Lord. My name is Apostle John Paul Okwak. Just like you said, I'm his brother. And um, when we left heaven, I landed in Aquaibum. He landed somewhere in the west here. Yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I want to really, really thank the Lord for this opportunity to be here. And God's servant is their wife and a powerful and very professional uh, team of church group coordinators and teachers. I have known them for years. I was just telling my bishop friend I came with that this man, Dr. Bola King John, has been teaching church group for more than 20 years now. Yes. And even when the crowd they had in the first one I attended, they were probably the very small corner there. But what I have discovered about him is his consistency. He knows what God has assigned him to do. He keeps at it. And now we are having this segment. I'm seeing very soon the whole of this place shall be jumped back. <laughs> Hallelujah. Great brother. You can't be around him and you meet dull moment. Am I correct? Full of life and encouragement. When I started ministry, um, I happened to attend one national ministers conference. I won't tell you the organizers. And there I was, just sitting in the congregation like that, expecting to hear great encouraging words. Because I'm just starting a walk in an uncompleted building. And the first one came and said, some of you here, you claim that God has called you to do ministry. You will die. I said, hey. <laughs> the second one came. He said, how are you sure that God called you? Go back to where you, you left from. Hey, I left that day depressed. Very, very depressed. But I said to God, ah, what is going on? Are you the one speaking to me? And the Lord gave me a scripture on Luke chapter 12 verse 32. Fear not, little flock. For it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Somebody say amen. amen. If you are there and your ministry is just beginning to grow, fear not. God will give you the entire kingdom. Amen. Say good amen in Jesus name. Amen. Before we pray, I want to quickly introduce Bishop Gide. He's a great brother highly used of God in PFN in uh, Lokoja and now he's in the western region here under the Foundation Faith Ministry. Let me celebrate God's servant there. God bless you sir. Amen. My work is more of practical. I would just show a little bit of teaching to connect us to the Holy Spirit and then we'll go into action and get hooked to the Holy Spirit. Those of you that are already baptized God would increase the, heart, the voltage of his glory in your life. Say good amen. amen. Those of you that are not yet baptized, it's very easy. You are going to be baptized as long as you are born again. If you are not, I will lead you to Christ. And you will be baptized filled with the power of God. And you will have no need for anything strange power. You will even deal with strength power and close them down. Amen. Lift up your tongue and say, Father, I'm here for you. Thank you for the blessings that you have blessed me word in this conference I receive every teaching by faith I use them to your glory right now I open myself to you fill me to overflow from head to toe with your power with your anointing with your spirit with your wisdom in the name of Jesus clap your hand and begin to pray that prayer Pray the prayer. Fill me to overflow. Right now, right now, right now. With your spirit, your wisdom, your glory, and with your power. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you, praise. We give you honor. Adoration. In Jesus' name we pray. Say this after me. Father, as I stand right now, 
anything in me that is not of God, any sin, disobedience, transgression, any offense, bitterness, unforgiveness, I release them all from my life, from my spirit. Let the blood of Jesus cleanse me, sanctify me. I repent of my sins. Have mercy upon me, Lord. Forgive me of all of them. Clap your hand and declare it in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Every sin, disobedience, every unrighteousness, may we be sanctified, O oh God, by your mercy. Let the blood of Jesus purify us. Oh God. We Thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. The last prayer upon before we sit and say, Father, baptize me with the Holy Spirit and with power. Say it again, Father, baptize me with the Holy Spirit and with power. Clap your hand and declare it in Jesus' name. Baptize me, O God, with the Holy Spirit and with power. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. So shall it be in the name of Jesus Christ. So shall it be in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, breathe upon me, Spirit divine. Take this lips of clay and speak a word in season to your people. Fill me with life and power. And let your name alone be exalted. We we'll give you praise, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Let me see that God bless you. Speaking on the subject, Holy Spirit power in, the lo in local churches. The power of the Holy Spirit. I know that everybody wants the power of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says, And you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, in, in Samaria, in Jude, and in uh, Jerusalem, in Samaria, and all the uttermost part of the earth. So God wants you and I to be his witnesses in Jerusalem, our immediate community, Samaria, Judea, and then the uttermost part of the earth. But that ability to be the true witness of Christ is called the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Spirit is a person. Remember, we're talking about Holy Spirit power in local churches. Because of time, I have to jump some things. Because when you talk about church, the church is made up of the local church and the church universal. All of us here come from different denominations. And there are several denominations across the nations of the world. But we, those denominations are all Christian churches, we call Okay, the whole body of Christ worldwide is called the church universal, as you may know. And um, then you have the local church, where you now have the local church in Nigeria. It's made up of the denominations, as, interestingly. And so we have the various denominations here, and this is the, where, what we are talking about. So that local church where you belong to, made up of the headquarters and the branches, we are saying that the Holy Spirit, if he is allowed to, fu to function fully, you will see unprecedented moves of God. Many people have tried to assess the Holy Spirit and his power. They couldn't. And then the people that come to them are full of problems. People come to church with a whole lot of troubles. And the pastor is so compassionate and uh, sincerely interested in solving the problem of the people and they couldn't deliver and so they start thinking of maybe they, I could use different methods we are just discussing with my friend there and he says some people will say let us use Satan to gather the people and use God to return how many of you know that Satan and God don't work together hallelujah 
If the foundation is faulty, what can the righteous do? So we can't use Satan to build the foundation for anything for God. No, no, no. God does not need assistance or help. I hope you know that. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. As you know, the church is, is, I mean, we have the kingdom of God, the kingdom of Satan, the kingdom of light, the kingdom of darkness. Those are two separate kingdoms. And our assignment in, in the kingdom of God or in the kingdom of light is to destroy all the works of the devil and bring people out of darkness and translate them into the kingdom of God's dear son. And that's our duty, our responsibility. And to be able to do that, precious people of God, we need power. Someone say power. Say it louder. Say it powerfully. That's right. We need power. And this power comes from the Holy Spirit. So the question is, who is the Holy Spirit? Is the third person in the Godhead is co-equal. The Holy Spirit and God the Father, or the Holy Spirit and, the, and Jesus, they are equal. Co-equal. They are trying in one Godhead, co-equal, co-substantial. They are co-substantial. The meaning of that is that, in a sense, in content, they are the same. Hallelujah. They are co-eternal. They are all eternal God. There's not going to be a time when God the Father will now uh, say, okay, my time is up. Let me hand over to the Son. And the Son grows old and go and die and hand over to the Holy Spirit. No, no, no. Nothing like that. They are all eternal. They are going to live forever and ever and ever. Praise God. All these things I'm saying have scriptures. I have to jump them because I want to hit the nail on the head straight. And um, you know, the, Jesus said in John 14 verse 26, John 14 26, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. The comforter that will come will teach you all things the Father will send. And he will even bring these things to your remembrance. The Holy Spirit is God and is the comforter. Hallelujah. In John chapter 15 verse 26, Jesus said the Holy Spirit shall speak of me. So, when you are in the meeting where the Holy Spirit is operating, he speaks a lot about Jesus. Talks about his atoning death. Talks about his redemption power. Talks about salvation. Talks about healing. Talks about deliverances. He hardly even talk about himself. Hallelujah. In John chapter 16 verse 7, Jesus said, I will send him unto you. He used the word him. The Holy Spirit is not a material thing. It's not an it. It's a person. A person. He said in John 16 verse 14, Jesus said, He, that is the Holy Spirit, shall glorify me. So everything the Holy Spirit does brings the glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. He shall not speak of himself. That's what I, what I told you. In John 16 verse 13, Jesus said, The Holy Spirit will not even bother to speak about himself. So the Holy Spirit is a person and the characteristic of a person. Now rush them so that we can go straight to the real thing now. Uh, the person should be able to teach like I'm teaching because I'm a person. I'm teaching you the word of God and the Holy Spirit is the best teacher. Hallelujah. May he teach you great things. May he teach you how to grow church. May he teach you how to live victoriously. May he show you the ways of God in the name of Jesus. He would testify of me, Jesus said. He would convict sinners. He would lead them. He would put a seal upon them, a seal of redemption. He would appoint them. He would equip them, intercede, search, prohibit some people from doing certain things. And then he would judge. He would speak. He can hear. He, he has a will. The Holy Spirit can love, can express his love. Hallelujah. He will comfort us, come in with us. He will give us, and he can be grieved. All these are characteristic of a personality. So the Holy Spirit is a person. We have proved that now. He's a, not just a person like you and I. He's a divine person. He's God. 
Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is who? Talk to me. God. Why do I say God? There are certain characteristics that God has. Anybody that has those characteristics is God. Are you hearing me? There are a lot of people, as I was growing up, that we used to have one man in, in Ecole Brain. They called him the Jesus of Ecole Brain. One day he died, and that was the end of that man. And then when I came to Lagos, somewhere around Onyibo, there was the Jesus of Onyibo there. Am I correct? And someday he died. And his children, I think, have sold some of those properties out. Now, but God has the following char characteristic. Those people is God because he is omnipresent. He is present everywhere. All at the same time. Omnipresent. It's in your heart, there is in my heart. And the Holy Spirit is in our homes, in our everywhere, all over the world. Omnipresent. Psalm 139, verse 7 to 10. He is omniscient, as you know. The Holy Spirit is omnipotent. Omniscient means he knows all things. Omnipotent means he's all powerful. All other powers submit to his own power. He's the ultimate power. That's why we need the Holy Spirit. He has the ultimate power. Power. Hallelujah. There are other powers around, but they are not the real power. Amen. He is eternal. He lives forever. He is creative. He can create what does not exist. He has the power to do that. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, he was involved in creation. Say in the beginning, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The earth was without form and void. Darkness covered upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the waters. He brooded upon the water. And then God said, Let there be light. So you see, Trinity at work there. God said, The word said is talking about Jesus because the word was spoken into existence. So God the Father spoke. Jesus, who is the word, and the Holy Spirit that brooded over it, obeyed the word of God, and bam, light came. I decree any area of darkness in your life, as I speak, let the darkness disappear. In the name of Jesus, shout a good amen. Please, may I quickly say this, if you are sick in the body, get ready, God is going to heal you. In the name of Jesus Christ, say good amen. The Holy Spirit gives us inspiration. It gives us revelation. It teaches us the ways of God. The Holy Spirit inspires us. He said, it, it, it gives us, it gives inspiration to the word of God to our spirit. He said, that, he said, there's a spirit in man, the inspiration of the almighty God gives them understanding. Hallelujah. May the Holy Ghost give you understanding. Hey, say good amen, precious people. When you leave this place and get back to church this weekend, your people will know that you came from the place of God. The power of God will follow you home in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So the Holy Spirit and now when we're talking about power in the Holy Spirit, operating in the power, it's, it's you that you become the focus because the Holy Spirit needs a vessel it needs you, it needs me to flow through to help the people. Every time people come to your church, those pains that are going through, God feels it. But God is looking for a vessel that is available, that is ready to pay the price. Now I'm hitting it now. Pay the price for the Holy Spirit to flow through them and touch them. I don't know if you are like me, when I started, I didn't have nobody to help me. No, when I said nobody, nobody except God. Nobody except God. So we had to go to what, what we can afford to pay, uncompleted building. And then we rented the place. And we were contending with powers. That's where I learned to flex muscle in the spirit. Because there, that building was abandoned for more than 30 years. And over 50 malams were there. Some of them were diviners. People used to come and consult them. And the landlord told me that that house, when he comes to the house, he goes back and will be sick for close to a month. So he doesn't come to the building. Because the malam don't want him to come there. So now, I went and rented the place. Small boy trying to start ministry face to face with 50 malams. It was not an easy thing. I told them, they told me that they're going to send me out. That I'm too small. I said, what? What did you say? <laughs> I said to them, I paid for the place. But you know, the Israelites were told to take the land small, small. Because if they take everything at the same time, they will be wild beasts. I didn't have enough crowd. So I told them, you, some of you will be in this congregation. Praise God. So I prayed. 
I went there and checked into one of the rooms. I put the door there and checked in there. And I stayed there for 21 days and 21 nights. Praying. I would read the Gospels and the book of Acts of the Apostle. I would pray in tongues until I sleep. I wake up and continue the prayer. I prayed and prayed. One day, it just occurred to me to stroll towards where the man I'm saying, they have all packed out. I don't know what chased them out. Every one of them. Gone. Somebody shout hallelujah. I decree from today, whatever used to challenge you, they will pack out of your environment. In the name of Jesus Christ, jump up and shout three men with authority in your voice. Hallelujah. People of God, the Holy Spirit is our strength. You don't need demons to help you. No. You don't need charms. You don't need a babalawa to help you grow church. What are you talking about? That's an insult on your position. On your person as a believer in Christ. When the Holy Spirit dwells in you, he sanctifies you. He instructs you. He empowers you. I'm not even talking about pastors only. Every believer should be a carrier of power. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit lives in you. He gives you the divine support. He gives you the intelligence. Because he has a, a supernatural intellect. He gives you wisdom. That's why a real anointed man of God is almost a general contractor. Come to the building, he has, he would operate the, the architect in the house. Say, but daddy, where did you learn this thing from? How many of you know what I'm talking about? That's it. Because he, the Holy Spirit knows everything. He operates through you. Glory to Jesus. I decree the Holy Ghost would walk in you as never before. Hey, 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 stand up and shout to the amen. Let me hear. All right, I ask you to add what we used to say in our church when we say amen, amen, amen. We add fire. Shout three amen. Let God hear your voice. Hallelujah. Praise God. I know I'm ministering to pastors and great men and women of God. We are connecting together. We have to do this thing together. We have to stand in righteousness. There are a lot of fake things in town. There has to be a breed of people that operate in the pure power of God. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, there's no other power stronger than the power of the Holy Spirit. No, 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 no. Nothing like that. One day, recently, just not far ago, about three weeks, uh, about a month ago, January, when we we're doing our fasting, you know, the Holy Spirit said to me, that he wants to show me something in our church premises. I said, hey. okay. I told my wife, I'm going to be doing all night alone in church. The Lord said, he wants to show me something. So I went there the first night, prayed alone. The security men uh, were around. Just said, Papa has come. So I prayed around the building, prayed in the church hall, prayed, prayed, prayed till, even, till morning time. I went to rest a little bit in the office and went home. Second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, nothing. Didn't see anything. Six day, nothing. On the seventh day, I was praying at the altar and the Lord said to me, go around the building. Oh, okay. I took my touch light. I said, in case neighbor take light. So I'm going around the building, going around the building. By the time I went around the building to the back, I'm coming out now, approaching towards the front of the building. I just saw a cat that came in the air like this. I don't know that cat can fly. A cat came in the air and landed in front of me. I said, wow. Cat, they fly for this area. <laughs> I said, you cat. I have bought this place in the name of the Lord. We are paid fully for the land. And you are coming, flying. You don't have, you don't have wings to fly. I bind you in the name of Jesus Christ. I break your power and the coven from where you came and send thunder to that place in the name of Jesus Christ. Phew, like this, he went under, under the car and we couldn't find the cat again. So, the following day, somebody strolled to the environment and said, You people are sending fire to this place, oh, 
Six people came. You are doing fire, fire, fire. I said, okay, church, turn on my show, fire. From today, fire will answer for you. Oh my God, jump up, shout three, amen. Let God hear your voice. Hallelujah. Let me behave myself so that my God can invite me again. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. The, now, I want to talk about why do people practice this, this um, uh, voodoo, voodooism? Why do you go into that? It's out of frustration. Some of them were not even called. They all saw that there is, there is what they call church business. So they go to acquire demonic powers to be able to attract crowd and extort money from them just like the other teachers uh, told us. You don't go join such people. A friend of mine told me how somebody invited him for an all night of some supposed ministers all night. So when he got there, he came to me for deliverance. So when he got there, he said, man of God, what I saw, my mark cannot talk. I said, you go talk before I pray for you. He said, they were praying around the hours of 2 a.m. They brought a white basin like this out to the center. I said, when he looked into, into it, it was filled with blood. They told, he said, they didn't open the Bible, not once. They told them, well, if you want church to grow, and you want your eyes to open so you can see vision, put your hand there. Take as much as possible, wash your face, drink the rest. He said, he said to him, Jesus, how do I escape from this place without being killed? So people were rushing this thing. They were rushing it. He said, he, he, he tried to backpedal. He said, God, I'm taking a risk. If I die, I die. He so said, he took a race to the gate. As God will have it, the gate man was asleep. He maneuvered his way out and ran out. He said, but since I came home, I'm not myself. He said he slept. By the time he, they gave him, he said they gave him a container. A container, I said, to prove to you that powers follow you. you know, in another meeting, they gave him a container. To prove to you that powers follow you, put the container under your bed. When you wake up, whatever you see there, let us know. He said he woke up and he saw a big, a big, um, what you know this thing that changes color what is it chameleon he said what should i do i said kill it kill chameleon he said they told him that if i kill it now my soul and i said kill him oh you go there if you want me to minister to you go and kill it take a picture of the dead one come to me i will deliver you he went home carried the container to the people they said for violating us, bring half a million. He ran back. This pastor, I don't know whether he's even here in this conference. This, this, anyway, at the end of, at the, end of the day, he killed it. He said, if I die, I die. He killed it. He came and cast the devil out of him. Today he's doing fine. The church is doing fine. From today, every confusion anybody has pushed into, I command it destroyed. Destroyed. Destroyed, destroyed in the name of Jesus. Shout three and let me hear. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah. So, people, because they want power, they begin to consult other medium with tourism, witchcraft, occultism, powers of, of, of strange realms. And I saw those teaching there already, so I know they have treated them. Some people. Some people actually use angels. Angels are meant to minister to those that are called heads of salvation. They are our assistants. They are there to, to hearken to our command. They are there to write on the word of God and cause things to happen. That's what angels are there for. They are our assistants. Hallelujah. He said, Make it Psalm 104, verse 4. Who make it his angels' spirit and his ministers flames of fire? So the angels are sent to help us. Angels who prayed in the ministry of Jesus enormously. And, and in the New Testament, Acts of Apostles, you see the work of angels. But some people have stopped praying to God. They now pray to angels. This is the error. You are not supposed to pray to angels, precious one. You are supposed to pray to God. 
If you pray to angels, no, no, no. Even if you pray in the name of Jesus to angels, angels are not God. Many a time, all through the Old Testament to New Testament, those who try to worship angels, the angels say, no, no, no. We are also servants of God like you are. Worship the living God. Hallelujah. You don't pray to angels, but you can command in the name of Jesus, let the angels of God go into action. So you can see you are not you're not praying to angels you are praying to the lord in the name of jesus releasing the power of god and angelic assistance to help you do you get what i'm saying now oh i'm not too fast are you okay all right so don't tell your neighbor don't pray to angels example of what i'm saying is this because i minister to many people i minister to somebody that used to be a woolly before and I came and we ministered deliverance to him. You know, some people fast, dry fasting, and all they are calling is in your cable, in your cable, in your cable, or in your Michael. No, no, it's not Michael that will answer you. It's not if any angel showed up and say, I am Michael, forget it. It's not Michael that came, it is another spirit that came bearing that name. Remember, they are, appear as angel of light. So pray to the Lord. If you are looking for names to call, look for all those names of God and call. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, God has made things easy for us in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, if you are praying for peace, you have to look for which of the names of God that carry peace. Jehovah Shalom. And say, oh God, Jehovah Shalom, send peace to my house. If you are praying for healing, you have to look for which of the Jehovah's. Jehovah will talk to me. Rafa. Okay, praise God. If you are praying for the, you, are, you want to pray for your children that are in school, you, you have to look for what, one of the names of God that said the Lord is there with them. What name is that? Jehovah Shama. Great people, great people, great people. Now, you know what God did? The Bible said in Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 11. Wherefore God has highly exalted him in verse 9. Gave him a name above every other name that the name of Jesus every knee should bow. What God did was to unzip a big bar called Jesus and put Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Shama, Jehovah me. All of the Jehovah's. So once you say Jesus if it is peace that you want peace will come from Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. So, fine. You call the name Jesus. It will work for you. Amen. I say amen. amen. Don't pray to angels. Angels are there for you at your beck and call. Amen. Angels cannot sanctify us. It's only the Holy Spirit that can do that. Quickly, quickly. Now, hallelujah. Weapons of power. We can't explore all of them, but let's take the word of God. We we're talking a moment ago with the, the Jew of this great work, this great uh, church, great work. Our dear brother and pastor, I call him the pastor of pastors. Hallelujah. He, he puts us on the on check and balances. When you are doing, you have to, in fact, you come here and cross check yourself. Am I still in the faith? Am I correct? Yes. Good man. Clap for him. Powerful man. Hallelujah. But hear these people of God. Hallelujah. Hear these people of God. When you are talking about the weapon of power, me and him were talking, and he, said, he quoted a scripture, which is Psalm 107, verse 20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. The word of God contains healing power and contains deliverance power. If you are a good student of the word and you can pray and fast, okay, fine, because when it comes to fasting, we have a lot of problems. Even if you cannot fast very well as you're supposed to, but you can pray and you study the word, the word will produce results for you. Say amen, let me hear he sent his word and healed them. Many pastors have gone sick and even died because of stress. 
Many times when my people are calling me and they are panicking, I say, what happened? Hey, somebody's in the hospital. Fine, if I can go to the hospital, I will go. But I know Psalm 107 verse 20 is not in vain. I said, put the phone on his ear. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from how many of the distortion? All. The power of God is embedded in the word of God. Study the word. Read it day and night. Sit down and think about when you study, let me help you. When you study the word, maybe you see Jesus, how he healed somebody. Stop and begin to meditate. Put that picture in your spirit and pray in the spirit for a long time. You, you begin to see the same result in your meeting. Are you there? Hallelujah. Every of my the miracles I've seen in our meeting, I saw them in the Bible first. I saw how Jesus healed somebody. I saw how Jesus enter the house of Simon Peter and healed the woman. He just held her in the hand, lifted her, and fever that was a, a big problem just dissolved like that. Ah, just like that. Ah. So I, I will go and pray myself up, looking for another Simon Peter, mother in law to heal. Are you hearing what I'm saying? From today, by your hand, people shall be healed. By the word of God in your mouth, people shall be healed. Shout three amen with authority in your voice. I can't finish this. I want us to pray. Do you prefer that? We just pray so that I can connect you to the power because very soon they will show me sign. I don't want them to show me sign before I finish. Praise God. I wish you had the teaching note is rich, very rich. But you see, you need the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit. So when, when I started the ministry, I read a book called Holy Spirit, I'm Hungry for You by a man called Fredson, Glass, Gladio Fredson from, from Latin America. The man was, was a, a pastor who went to Assemblies of God Bible School and came back burning hot and wondering why all these churches are not growing since they started that he wanted to start a big church he went and started church for four years he only had four people the youngest was 70 years and they died one after another and he buried them all <laughs> hallelujah so he now head of a powerful evangelist that can win souls he went to invite the man the man said, I will come. But two days before the meeting, after he had spent the last money he had, did advertisement, the man called him and said, eh, by the way, how many people are in your church? He said, they all died. I, I want to start afresh. Okay. I'm not coming. So he was in trouble. No, this happened like three to four days before the meeting. So the man said, man of God, had fixed the meeting in a in a, a place like a park where criminals fill the place, they smoke Indian hems. And he has already hired equipment, everything. So anyway, he can't change the crusade. He knows how to play box guitar. So he said, well, I will just go and play the box guitar. Whatever happened will happen. So he started crying in the night. Every night, Holy Spirit, I'm hungry for you. Somebody that has you has, the, has failed me. You enter me now. Holy Spirit, I'm hungry for you. Is there anybody in the house? First day, second day, third day, he refused to eat food. He refused to leave the spot, the spot with which he was. And then the wife said, well, this is the evening of the meeting. He said, I know. So he went there and the people, the criminal were asking him, you want to have a party? He said, yes, yeah, something like that. So 1,000 criminals were waiting for party. And then he came, climbed the podium, sang a song and played his, his box guitar. The people crossed their hand and waited for him. That What nonsense is this? So he said he knew that it's either they killed him there or something must happen. Hallelujah! Something would happen for you. God would happen for you. Shout three and let me hear. So the man dropped the box guitar, closed his eyes, 
and preached a simple salvation message, refused to open his eyes. He said, in case they stone him, you will just die and go to heaven straight. He said, when he opened his eyes, after he made an altar call, the chief of the criminals with the red cloth, cloth across his head like this was coming towards him. He said, oh. He told his wife, well, whatever happened, no problem. <laughs> So the man came, but he said, he realized that as the man was coming close, he saw tears coming down his face. So he said, wow. So the man came. When he got to the place of the podium, as he stood up, all the other nine, 999, am I correct? They all followed him. And when he got to the podium, he knelt down crying. All of them knelt down crying. Hallelujah. And they all gave their life to Christ. He started a Bible school with these people. Foundation classes. And that man became the chief crusade director. The head of the criminal. Hallelujah. So transformed that his church grew from nothing to 1,000 in a single night. May you have an encounter for the church. Stand to your feet somebody.